Hello guys. If you remember previously, we spoke to you about the APS certificate now being mandatory for all students who want to go to Germany for their higher studies. And it was announced that this portal will be live and up on October 1st for students to start applying for the APS certificate. And they have been smart enough. They have gone live on the September 30th, that is today. So you don't have to wait for you to know what goes into the online portal when you have to make the payment or fill the applications for the APS certificate. So we are going to take you through this video, a series of sequential steps. We're going to show you what goes into filling the online APS certificate portal. So the website is APS-INDE.DE. We are leaving this link in the description for you. You go to this link and it's a simple, straightforward process. You go and you just create a username and a password for yourself. You have to make sure that the password is minimum seven characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, and one special character is mandatory. Otherwise, it will not take. That is very, very important. So once you create your account, the next page, it takes you on to enter your personal details. It's as simple as creating a simple email ID. So you don't have to worry about these things. So on the next page, it asks you to upload your photo. This is very important, guys. So before you start filling the application, make sure you have your passport size photo with a white background ready. And it will not allow you to upload if it is more than 30 KB. So your photo that you're going to scan should be less than 30 KB, guys. So keep a note of it so that you don't waste time. That is very, very important. So it asks for your first name, your last name, your email ID, your gender. It also asks for your nationality. Your date of birth needs to be entered. Also, when you're filling in your personal details, keying in your Aadhaar card is mandatory. The Aadhaar card number is mandatory. It also asks for your passport number. That is also mandatory. So keep these things handy. You cannot go wrong in entering your Aadhaar card number and your passport number. That's very, very important. It also asks for uh, the address. They have given you a couple of lines for the address. They have also given you the landmark so that uh, when you receive your APS transcripts uh, or the certificate, you receive them at the right address. So please make sure that your address is mentioned correctly. There is sufficient space for you to enter the correct address with the landmark so that when they ship the transcripts or the certificates to you through APS, you get them delivered with no hassles. That is very, very important. After personal details, it takes you to your next page. That is where you keen about your education details. The questions here are pretty straightforward. It asks you to enter the class 10th details. It asks you to enter your class 12th or your pre-university details. So you have to make sure that you have to keep all these things ready with you. And uh, it also asks you uh, your 10th board name, the year you cleared your 10th class. It also asks for the 10th center number, which is not mandatory. You can ignore that if you don't have it handy. Uh, it also asks for your 10th percentage. Then it asks for your class 12th details the same way. The board name, it is what it is going to ask you for. It is also going to ask you for the passing of the year for 12th. It asks you your 12th center ID if you know it. It also asks for the year of passing and the percentage. Post which it also asks if you've completed any diploma. So if that's applicable for you, so please enter any diploma thing that is available for you if you've completed or applicable. If not, then you can proceed to the next section. And in the next section, it's going to ask you about education details too. So ideally in education details too, this tab asks about your bachelor's degree details. So it'll ask you whether you're still completing your bachelor's or have you completed your bachelor's degree. So choose the appropriate. It asks for your bachelor's university name, the institute name. So be very careful in entering all this. It also asks for the bachelor's course that you've uh, pursued. So maybe like Bachelor of Engineering or Bachelor of Technology or Bachelor of Science. So please enter it appropriately. It clearly asks you for a bachelor's duration. It only takes a numeric value. So enter either three or four. Don't enter words like years. It does not take. It says invalid format. 
It asks for your bachelor's subject, so you enter whether it's computer science or mechanical engineering. It also asks for your year of passing. It asks for your bachelor's percentage. It also asks for your bachelor's CGPA. So if your university gives it to you in percentage, enter percentage. If it gives it to you in CGPA, enter the CGPA. It asks for your bachelor's student login ID, bachelor's student password, and bachelor's professor's email. You can leave this blank. It's not mandatory. It's not required at this point of time if you don't know what it is. It can be ignored. So if somebody is applying for a PhD and they have done masters, so they have an option to enter their masters details here as well. And apart from that, if they have done any diploma or certification programs, they give you an option to add the additional degree as well. And then it takes you to test as details on the next page. On the test as details, mostly it is if you are going in for your bachelor's degree in Germany. So you can ignore if you're applying for master's and PhD, you can skip. Then it takes you to the language details. So in the language details, it asks you uh, for two options. Either you can enter English or German language. You cannot enter both. It gives you an option to enter only one. So if you're going in for the German taught program, we recommend that you enter your German language proficiency. If you are predominantly applying for an English taught program, you can go ahead for selecting English and then it gives you an option whether it's TOEFL or IELTS. You choose whether it's TOEFL or IELTS and then you can enter the result. So that is what happens on the test details or the language details, I'm sorry. So once you uh, add in the language details, you make sure it doesn't take special characters. And finally, it takes you to the page of the payment details. Now, when you are going on to the payment details, what it expects ideally is you should have already made the payment of 18,000 rupees because on the payment details page, you need to enter the reference of the payment already made. So even before you begin, you can, uh, we are leaving the description, uh, the checklist for you. Please download the checklist. And at the bottom of the checklist, they have given you the bank account details where you have to go and make the payment. And once you make the payment, you will have the transaction details handy with you because those details need to be entered here. And only then you will be able to submit your application. So uh, on the payment details, I'll quickly tell you what it asks for. It asks for the first name of the payee, the last name of the payee. So suppose you've paid the payment through your father's account. So first name will be of the payee. So don't enter your name. So from whose account the payment has been made, you have to enter those details guys here. Please don't go wrong because the transaction details have to match because only when you give the correct payee name, it will match with their records. So you have to enter the first payee name. You have to enter the last name of the payee date of the offline payment. So you have to uh, enter the date on which the payment was made and you have to give the bank name and every payment that you make will have a bank transaction reference number. And you need to key in that reference, uh, that reference number here and post which you have to give the IFSC code of your bank and the transfer amount that you have to do. That is very, very important and post which it will ask you to submit. And the moment you submit, you get your application validated. And post which, that is the print that you will be taking. The checklist is already available for in the description. Arrange all the documents as per the checklist. The address is given to you and you can buy post or courier send all these documents. Make sure the documents are of color copies and not black and white to be on the safer side. Make sure all the copies that you're making are of A4 size. Don't change the size of the copies. That's very, very important. So this is what is the first hand. It's been about an hour that the website is up. It's open. We've made the video and we have given you a hint on what goes into filling the online APS certification process. So follow these instructions. I'm sure most updates will come in days to come and we will try and bring in all the updates regarding this so that it's a hassle-free process for people flying to Germany and need the APS certificate done. I'm sure this video has been helpful to you. I'm sure we're going to come back with a lot of updates on this. So keep hitting the subscribe, like and the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of these updates. Thank you so much.